Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to talk about how to choose a statistical test based on your data. So different types of data requires different types of a statistical test for analysis. So first of all, let's have a look here. So this, this chart I have picked it from the book called SPSS Explained by Hinton, McMurray and Brownlow. And uh, I think I, I actually like this chart and I think it, it is a very good start to understand which statistical test is required for your data based on your research question and based on your data, okay? So first of all here, I, I'm just going to go through like how you pick a test from this chart, okay? So first here, look here, like what do you want? When you look for differences between conditions, then this box is important. This box is relevant for you, okay? This part, okay? So here, within this, we have other categories. And again here, if you want to compare frequency counts for categorical variables, then this is relevant for you. For correlations, this part is relevant for you, okay? And if you want to reduce data, then this part is in, yeah, relevant for you, okay? So first of all, let's say we want to look difference between conditions. Then we'll come here. We have like here four, four situations. So depending on number of variables and conditions, we have here four situations. So first of all, let's say we, we have one variable, two conditions. What do I mean by that? Let's say you want to see the difference in mean expenditure of male and female. So you have, actually you have two variables, one continuous variable and another is gender. So the gender variable, we have two conditions, which we can treat as two conditions. One, we have continuous variable, mean expenditure and then we have gender and gender we have two conditions so this is what we can do if we want to see the difference in expenditure for males and females then we can use uh, this test okay but then it depends on the design of the study have we collected data once or multiple times collecting data once means you, you your study design is independent and if you collect the data from the same sample, same people, multiple times, then we treat, we call it repeated measures, okay? So based on whether it is independent measures or repeated measures, independent samples or repeated measures, then we have four situations here, which also relies on the distribution of the data. So here we have two conditions, parametric and non-parametric. So if your data is Parametric, that means your data is normally distributed. And if your data is not normally distributed, then you will go for non-parametric test, okay? So that means, let's say, if we want to see mean comparisons of expenditure for males and females, and our data, we, we, we collect the data only once, let's say in 2017, from, from our sample, and then we checked the normal distribution of the mean expenditure and we found that data is normally distributed. So we will go for parametric. So we will have independent and we'll have parametric, not independent and non-parametric, but we, our case will be independent and parametric. And then we'll go for independent samples t-test. But in case we would have collected data independently, but data was not normally distributed, we should have gone for man whitney u test okay and in case we would have collected data multiple times okay we 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 had a situation like we we collected data from a mean expenditure in 2017 and mean exp expenditure in 2018 and we want to compare the difference in these two years so we have one variable but here we have two conditions which are the years the years are the two different conditions okay then we would go for related t-test if data was normally distributed if it was not normally distributed, then we will go for Wilson test. Then again, so here we have like one variable, two conditions, but what if we have more than two conditions? We cannot really use this test in that case. We have to, because this will inflate the significance level. I'm not going to the theoretical issues, but there are some issues with inflation, with alpha inflation, if we apply multiple times the independent sample t-test. So we cannot really do that. So this test will be relevant for us when we have more than two conditions, okay? So one variable, more than two conditions. 
Later we have a variable like exam score and then we have three programs academic, vocational, general. We have three programs and we want to see, we want to compare the result of the exam scores. We want to compare for the three different groups of uh, three different program program groups. Okay, so then we will be using something from here based on the uh, other things as well. Like we have to again look into the study design if it is independent measures or if it is re repeated measures. If independent measures data is normally distributed, we will go for one factor independent measures ANOVA. If our data is collected multiple times in in three different years and we want to compare if there is any difference in the uh, in the data in the mean score of the three different years then we'll go for and and all the variables are normally distributed then we'll go for one factor repeated measures and if we had independent measures and data was non-parametric then we'll go for cruise colossus if uh, our data was collected multiple times and data was non-parametric we'll go for Friedman. and then if we had two variables what would we do and we want to our, our our study design is independent measures on both variables and data is parametric then we'll go for two factor ANOVA if we had one variable and one repeated measure factor then we'll go and and our our data is parametric then we'll go for two factor repeated ANOVA measures if the study de design is that repeated measures on both variables then we'll go for and data is normally distributed then we'll go for two factor mixed design ANOVA if we had more than one variable, which is also possible to check for, um, normally if if the the dependent variables are associated with each other, then we can sometimes do it like this: that we 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 do uh, check the effect of an independent variable on the two dependent variables at a time. So we we can do the, we can do this test. Uh, we we can also test uh, two dependent variables. I mean, more than more than one dependent variables. It could be two. It could be three. Okay. So then again, that uh, if data is collected only once and data is normally distributed, then we'll go for independent MANOVA. If data is collected multiple times and we, we and and data is normally distributed, we'll go for repeated measures MANOVA. And sometimes we may have situations where we want to compare frequency counts. We want to do some hypothesis testing of two categorical variables. In that case, we will go for non-parametric and uh, of course uh, categorical variables are non-parametric. And then we have to do the chi-square test. And then we can also look for correlations. If we have two variables and data is parametric, we'll go for Pearson. If data is non-parametric, we'll go for Spearman. If uh, data is non-parametric and categorical, then we'll go for Kendall's Tau. Okay. So for correlation between two categorical variables, we go for Kendall's Tau. And if we have two or more variables, then we'll go for some regression. If, if data is normally distributed we'll go for multiple regression if we have some binary variables as well which is not that dependent variable independent binary variables okay in those cases we will again we will we'll still use uh, multiple regression but just for our information if the dependent variable is binary then we have to go for logistic regression okay which is not shown here in this chart and sometimes we collect data for one concept using multiple questions and then we want to make factors of that or we want to get a one value for all the multiple uh, questions that we used for, for the for the for data collection so in those cases we will normally go for factor analysis okay so factor analysis is normally based on the correlation uh, correlation among the variables or like items that makes a factor so that's what we will do and when we do factor analysis, it is important to do reliability analysis of the factors. Okay, so this uh, reliability analysis is kind of related with that. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please like, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube.